you know, holes. Those are those things that sometimes cause us difficulty. When you get a hole in your rain jacket, as you might have done in a few days past, you get that annoying little drip coming in when there's a, a hole in something and you say, my goodness, there's a, there's a tear. What am I going to do? When you get a, a hole in something, it's annoying, isn't it? But so often it's easy to ignore. We get holes in our faith, don't we, from time to time. Holes that are easy to ignore in our devotion, in our faith. Those things we excuse, we set aside. Those ways in which we fall short. Those holes, those exemptions. Those things that we whitewash over. They make it difficult for us to be wholly given to God. Let me give you a great, for instance, I don't know, maybe you have uh, a favorite pair of shoes. I happen to have a favorite pair of boots. And these are some uh, boots that have been with me a long, long time. And uh, I guess they're probably about uh, 25 years old. They're old boots, but they are so comfortable. They are great. And every once in a while, well, I wear through the soles. And you know, I get to thinking, well, I'm just going to ignore those holes because who wants to take the time to get your boots resold, right? You have to go somewhere, drop them off, and then you have to pay and do it all over again. And so, quite often, I get to wearing these boots and they have holes in them. But they cause me a lot of problems. My feet get wet, and then I start wearing out even more than just the soles. And so I have to stop. I have to get these good old boots resold. And I don't want to because, boy, those old soles have gotten comfortable just like the rest of these boots. But I need to do it. I need to take stock and have those things resold and redone. I can't ignore those holes. They're going to cause me a, a lot of trouble in the long run. And you know our faith is like that. Just like these old ones. We become comfortable with the holes, don't we? Whatever those holes might be. The things we excuse, the things we put aside, the things that we say to ourselves, well, God doesn't mind this. I'll just live with it. But Peter says, let me walk you through a new beginning in your faith. Let me remind you of the holy God who has called you to be wholly his in Jesus Christ. And then let me remind you of some of the holes, some of the holes that come about in your faith from time to time. And so he says, discipline your minds. Discipline your minds for action. Trust in God. Set all your faith and hope on the resurrected Christ. Be holy in all of your conduct as he who called you is holy. You know, from time to time, we reaffirm our faith as we're doing here, remembering God's call in our lives, even way back in our baptism. From time to time, we remember that God's call upon our lives to be holy his, to repair those holes, calls us to examine aspects of our faith. And so we talk about our commitment to God with our prayers, our presence, our service, and our gifts. Maybe those are a few of your holes that need to be repaired today. What about your prayers? Have you prayed for those that desperately need your prayers with earnestness, with faithfulness, putting your heart into it? Have you been faithful to be present, not just here in this place, but present for God? Have you reported for duty? Have you put yourself in those places where you are going to be challenged and stretched and 
made into Christ's image? Have you given yourself to serve Christ? Not only in familiar ways, but new ways? And what about God's blessings? Have we held on too tightly? Are we afraid to let go and trust completely in Him to be wholly His? Our prayers, our presence, our service, our gifts, all that we are. This holy God calls us to be wholly His. But I have a feeling that like me, all of us have probably gotten comfortable with some holes, some holes in our faith. We're not holy. We're trying to be holy His. But we wind up with a holy, H-O-L-E-Y sort of faith. And so Peter says, remember that God is holy. Remember that He's called you to be given holy to His and then set about the business in your lives of repairing the holes. Your prayers, your presence, your service. Your gifts. Trust in God, he says. Set all your faith and hope on the resurrected Christ. Be holy in all of your conduct, as he who called you is holy. I want to suggest to you in the new year that it may be time to repair some holes in our faith and in our lives. Amen.